In May 1945, Rebeliezer Silver of the United States and Diane Grunfeld were sent as chaplains to liberate some of the death camps in Europe. While they were there, they were told that there were Jewish children that were being held in a monastery in south of France. They traveled there and they approached the priest and they said that we've come to collect the Jewish children. The priest responded by saying, unless you've got documentation identifying which children are actually Jewish, I will not be able to hand over any children to you. One of the rabbis thought of an ingenious idea and he said, you know what, we'll come back tonight when you're about to put the children to sleep. That night the rabbis returned and they went into the dormitory and there were these small beds. There were children who were there since 1939 and as the children were about to go into bed to sleep, the rabbis walked up and down the aisle and in a very loud voice they cried out, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Eloikeinu, Hashem Echad. Hear Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And as they said that, child after child began to lift their hands to cover their eyes. And every child who lifted their hands, the rabbis cried out, that child, his ours, we're taking that child home. The Shema Yisrael is a prayer that we say every morning when we wake up. It's a prayer that we say every evening when we go to sleep. It is the prayer that we conclude the Yom Kippur service at a time when we are truly angelic. It has been the prayer that Jews have cried out for generations as they were about to be taken, to be killed, al Kiddush Hashem, and murdered simply because they were Jewish. It is in this week's parsha that we read the Shema Yisrael. At a very basic level, the Shema Yisrael is a proclamation and a declaration of our belief in one God. However, the Hasidic masters offer a fascinating insight into this verse that really sheds light on our very existence and the world around us. And they explain that when God created the world, God took nothingness and brought it into matter. And in order for that matter to remain in existence, there needs to be a constant force, a constant energy from God for it to remain as such. But as soon as God would remove that energy, then it would revert back to nothingness as it once was. So in a sense, says the Hasidic masters, everything that we see, everything that we touch and everything that we imagine is really an expression of godliness. And therefore when we say Hashem Echad, God is one, what we are really saying is, that there is nothing besides God. Imagine if we lived in a world where we could sense that, where we could feel that. Imagine if we lived our lives inculcating that idea in every fiber of our body. What type of world would we live in? The next time we raise our hands to say the Shema Yisrael that simple act, let us never forget it was that act that saved the Jewishness of so many Jewish children. And perhaps, just perhaps, they understood better than each and every one of us how every single thing that occurs in the world as we know it is nothing more than an expression of God Himself. Thank you.